echiri echiri eno mu parliament ye gwanga Uganda muliro ogutokota bintu sibya kusaga uh, bidi abidi mwena uh, onolopo muja gotuafunye jowe lo senyo nyi uh, ebi gamba abi kubila dala ate ya kubila dala kumutuwe kutabusi uh, government ya jeno mseven ate bige na jiwe labi yangu uh, kumulembe guno omu senyo nyi omu jowe lo <laughs> uh, president chagulanyi senta mulo badbobo wa inaline ngeri jale ngeri mwe bintu bie ate wa magwe dala ngeri ngeri ye kola uh, chiri mparlament ya uh, waluo kukuisa budget uh, kwe ole nsimbi uh, kubanti ya beole duwa kwa mtiba sasurwa wa laba sasurwe uta uleo mparlament nomu la mua uguo kwa gala ukufibia aha government ya chagulanyi acheshiri mu parliament ngebitundu ebyo ebyalonda chagulanyi center mulo but bobby wine tebiko tebiwe wa services ngo obutakola ngudo zombi tundu ebyalonda chagulanyi obuta badwa dagala malwaliro mu bitundu ebyalonda chagulanyi okubanti abasomesa tebasasulwa mu bitundu ebyalonda chagulanyi okubanti abana abali mu masomero agali mu bitundu ebyalonda chagulanyi bonna basulibwa bagwa byono byonna bigende Uh, kazanyo, uh, kazanyi era uh, kagendelele okulaba mbubenyi ya abantu chagulanyi ne national unit platform katino kunsongezo uh, omukuru jo senyo nyi kwa imiride na asimbule chigambo eshiri mu parliament bidi abidi mwena onaulira kiriza tugere tubifune leader of the opposition i adon honorable ndezi i adon honorable ababiko I don't know if you're okay, and in Tungamo, and Dr. Yonga. Then I'll come this side. Thank you. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, you encouraged us to debate nationally, as opposed to in a partisan nature. You can be sure we are going to oblige. Because anyway, that's what ought to happen in this house. There are a few pointers, right, Honorable Speaker and members, that I want to raise regarding our budgetary process and our budget as it is. Number one, right, Honorable Speaker, is this animal called corruption. The Inspectorate of Government conducted a survey and they found that as a country, we lose between 9.1 trillion to 20 trillion shillings per year to corruption. That's the IGG report. Between 9.1 trillion to 20 trillion shillings per year. Now, right honorable speaker, if we don't address this evil called corruption, we'll keep having budgetary shortfalls. Government for a long time keeps talking, huffing, and puffing about fighting corruption, and, and it stops at the talk. We need to roll up our sleeves and deal with this evil called corruption very seriously. In fact, I think we, we, we sometimes sanitize this, this issue by giving it flowery names. We call it corruption, we say misappropriation, squandering of resources. These guys are thieves the people that are stealing taxpayers' money. And our hope is that government will take serious action, as opposed to the talk, 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 because we keep talking and we take little action regarding this issue. I wanted to paint a picture of what 9.1 trillion shillings can do. And, and by the way, that's the lower limit, because the maximum is 20 trillion shillings, according to the IGG report. According to the Ministry of Health, the estimated cost for constructing and equipping a health center for is 13 billion shillings. That's constructing and equipping. Now, 9.1 trillion Uganda shillings can construct and equip 700 health center fours. Just think about that. In all your constituencies, all of our constituencies, the challenges we are grappling with, this money that is stolen by these thieves in government could fix that. And that's one year. And the following year, that money can do a lot more. We need to redeem this money. Right, Honorable Speaker, according to the Auditor General's report that was just released to us, we 
are losing 53 billion shillings per annum to ghost employees. These are people who either died, retired, resigned, or who are even non-existent. 53 billion shillings as part of our wage bill every single year. And yet there are things we keep complaining about and this money could fix. Our demand is that uh, government takes stern action against all the culpable accounting officers. Because this is the Auditor General's report. And so we know these fellows. We need to take serious action, right, Honorable Speaker? Honorable Speaker, let me talk about fiscal indiscipline. We, we plan, but then again, we behave as if we do not plan. Every so often, the Minister of Finance comes to Parliament to present supplementary budgets. Now, the understanding of supplementary budgets is that uh, this should be especially for the unforeseeables. But the Minister of Finance, even at the end of last year, kept tabling supplementary budgets for wages and salaries, for staff who have running contracts. How does that make sense? These are staff, they've got running contracts, you knew about it, but you've not planned for it. It does not make sense, right, Honorable Speaker, especially if we are talking about having fiscal discipline. We want to see better in that regard. Let me talk a bit about our debt burden. And the Minister of Finance was uh, trying to make us believe that our debt burden is just 86 trillion shillings. It's not true. Because debt burden is not that which you borrow only, which you borrow domestically and elsewhere. 10.5 trillion shillings is owed by government to, among others, business persons that supply to government, goods and services. These are people that government has refused to pay. We don't understand why. People borrow money from banks for their businesses. And you are not paying as government. Their businesses are crumbling. And yet these are taxpayers. And actually, what we should be doing as government is to, in, in many ways, propel these businesses. But we are cutting off their wings. They are supplying goods and services to you as government. And you don't want to pay. And you don't even want to consider that as part of your debt burden. I don't understand why. It just does not make sense. And by the way, this figure keeps growing. Right, Honorable Speaker. For want of time, I would have taken you through how it has grown every single year. It keeps growing. And for this particular budget that's been presented to us, government has only availed 200 billion shillings. You want to give information? Thank you, honorable colleague, for giving way. And I want to thank the right honorable speaker for the opportunity to provide information to the colleague. In government, I would like to say that the authority responsible for compilation of statistics is Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Now, there are highly specialized statistics that OBOS is not responsible for. And one of them is the monetary statistics, which Bank of Uganda actually is responsible for its compilation. The fiscal statistics, on the other hand, is the responsibility of Minister of Finance. So if you're looking for any official statistics on public debt, where you must refer to is Minister of Finance. And therefore, I beg colleagues that we listen to the fiscal authority, that's Minister of Finance, as represented by Honorable Mosasisi, and then we do the analysis. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, uh, colleague. What are my colleagues? Point, of, uh, point of order. Okay. Right, Honorable Speaker. I'm trying to put to order the Honorable colleague that has been submitting. No, the, you're putting to order no, the rope. No, not the law. No, the His one submission. on floor. No, no the one it's on him. The... Right, Honorable. No, no, no. Right, Honorable Speaker, I, I thought I saw Honor, for Honor Wenamuga, the rules are clear. The one holding the floor is the one you're putting to order. So if it is not rope, you leave him. <laughs> I thought you were putting <laughs> rope to order. So since the other part is not on the floor, so you can't put him on order. Thank but, you. But during debate, you can clarify on what he said. 
Thank you, right honorable speaker. Um, and I thank the colleague for the information. Somebody at the back shouted and said, Lop, only allow information uh, if it is relevant. I said, well, I'll listen to the colleague. He's given his information. Uh, again, in very practical terms, it does not make sense. When you say you only owe those you have borrowed from, once people provide goods and services to you and you have not paid them, you owe that money. In very simple economics language. So, in the layman's understanding, you owe that money. It is a debt. I don't know why you want to call it anything else. So, you cannot convince us here that your debt as government is only 86 trillion shillings. No, because the 10.5 trillion shillings is money that you owe and you should pay it. Because, like I was saying, these are business people who are struggling to eke out a living. They are borrowing money. Their businesses are shutting down because government is such a bad entity to deal with. There's no other way to put it. So, maybe just uh, for the interruption, Honorable uh, Joe, the, there's something indeed which I would also want to understand as, as he submits. How come these other debts we call them statutory and we must provide here money and we pay? Then, me, a Ugandan, who has borrowed money from a bank, staked my house, supplied the government, when my debt comes, you say the one you borrowed from America is okay, you is statute and you can't default. But on mine, you can default. They, they would rather sell my house. Okay? Mine is not statute. It's, uh, that, that's what I'm picking from what on a wall. Because you see, I have met, I have met Ugandans who have lost property due to government failing to pay their money. They borrowed money against their houses. Their houses are being taken. Why do we, uh, uh, in a layman, let's say in a layman, because most of Ugandans are not economists, we are laymen, including me, I'm not an economist. Okay, how come you classify these other debts, foreign debts, and what in such a way that they must be paid? Then, for me, who has even provided the service, mine is classified as second priority. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I can see the spirit and the reasoning under which and the sentiments that are behind the feelings of our colleagues and yourself and myself, yes. But Mr. Speaker, there is a very big difference between what we borrow to finance the budget and what someone commits out there on a premise that what he or she has supplied the government will be paid and he settles the debt. So we need to put a difference there. Mr. Speaker, from the layman's language, they are all debts. And from the accounting perspective, they are all debts. That is why the Auditor General is disclosing them in the books. But from, from Honorable Chai's perspective, recognition of these elements are practically different. If you want the official information on debt, on public debt stock, it is not Auditor General, it is not Bank of Uganda, it is the Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, back to your issue. Point of order. No, no, proceed, no, Minister, proceed. And submit. I haven't allowed anyone on. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, our verified domestic careers, what you. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, 
on verified domestic arrears is 2.7 trillion. We have verified domestic arrears amounting to 2.7 trillion. Mr. Speaker, we have a commitment as Minister of Finance that at least on an annual basis, we, as much as possible, try to reduce them. I wish we had all the resources to settle the 2.7 trillion at a go. But in the circumstances, every financial year, like in 2022, we provided 666 billion to settle domestic arrears. In this year, we have so far paid 200 billion. Even next year, we have budgeted to pay another 200 billion. And this is over and above the provision for court awards. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, the spirit, the spirit is there. Thank you. What is limiting us are the resources, but we really desire to settle all these domestic areas. You, you know, me, my role was to understand properly the, the logic behind all this. So, Honorable, <laughs> Honorable Joe will continue. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for that very relevant information and guidance you gave. The minister needs to stop speaking too much English. Huh? This is the total amount of money that you owe. Just pay your debts. That's the bottom line. Especially for me, my bigger challenge is our Ugandan locals, because you see, that's money that keeps within the economy. These fellows employ young people. You're not paying them, they are closing their businesses. So the entire economy gets to suffer. They pay taxes and so on. We, we tend to focus a great deal, by the way, on foreign investors. They come here, we give them free land. We give them tax holidays for several years. Of late, we're even guaranteeing them money. What kind of investors are those? And yet our local investors who are putting in their own money that they borrowed from the bank, we don't want to pay them. Let's get serious. Ranova Speaker, let me talk a little about sports. Our bid uh, to co-host the AFCON is a daunting task. Simply because for a very long time we have not prioritized sports. My hope is that we can wake up. Sports employs many young people. They're out there shining. We normally celebrate them when they return with medals. But in the process of going, they are normally on their own. They are in solitude, trying to look for money here and there. There's a time when there had to be a fundraising for shoes for our athletes some years back. C can we be serious? There was a promise about Akibua Stadium. Right, Honorable Speaker, we need commitment from government to construct this stadium. Because it's not just a stadium going to be for the northern part of the country, it's a stadium for Uganda. And so we need commitment. But even as government gives us commitment, we, we want that uh, there gets to be proper value for money because the figure that uh, government has quoted is $48 million. That's about 183 billion shillings. When you to try and make comparisons, I was trying to make comparisons. Um, there's a stadium called Marsabit in Kenya, with a seating capacity. By the way, the Akibua Stadium is meant to be a 20,000 seater. This Marsabit has a capacity of 15,000 people. And uh, it's meant to cost, it cost 295 million Kenya shillings. That's 6.9 billion Uganda shillings. This is a 15,000 seater. Ours is a 20,000 seater. And government is telling us they need 183 billion shillings. These figures have got to make sense because currently they don't make sense. We want the stadium, but we want value for money. We don't want the animal as talking about corruption to seep here in, as we have seen many times. I'll take the information much later. Let me move to health, right, Honorable Speaker. I have declined the information, Honorable Colleague. Thank you. Right, Honorable Speaker, we, we have had this coining of uh, medical tourism in this country because government officials, whenever they are unwell and they cannot uh, be treated sorry, here. Government of ministers take note on issues where you feel the information is not right, then you will be given a chance. 
clarify. You, you will get a chance to clarify, okay? Yeah. Right, Honorable Speaker, medical tourism, as it has become a coinage, we were told that with the construction of uh, Lubowa Specialized Hospital, this medical tourism would come to an end. That promise has since become a shadow of its former past. And yet each year we have been injecting money. Right, Honorable Speaker, I want to remind colleagues, because these are not my figures, yeah? about how much money we have so far injected in Lubowa Specialized Hospital. So far, it is 113 billion shillings. So far. What is there to see? Your guess is as good as mine. 113 billion shillings. Let me break it down. 2021, there was a 21.6 billion, another 21.9 billion, Again, in 2021, that was September, 22.5 billion shillings. In 2022, there was 23 billion. Again, in April of 2022, 23.8 billion. When you total that up, that's 113 billion shillings. That's money that has gone. Where is Lubowa Hospital? At the end of last year, part of the supplementary that the minister brought was 2.7 billion shillings to supervise ongoing works at Lubowa Hospital. We demand that government accounts for this money because this is not little money. It could have done a lot more. It could have built health centers and so on. It seems to be disappearing in thin air. Right, Honorable Speaker, we demand that government accounts for this 113 billion shillings. Plus, of course, the 2.7 billion that was deployed to supervise. Let me talk a bit about our men and women in uniform. Firstly, defense UPDF. Uh, it's good our colleagues are here. Honorable Sebuji was saying they are listening posts. We shall want them to probably respond. Anyway, we, we have a challenge, right, Honorable Speaker and members. Our men and women in uniform, UPDF, police, of course, prisons, they, they live like refugees in their country. And yet they hold guns. We expect them to serve the country. But just look at the conditions under which they live. Look at how much they earn. Right, Honorable Speaker, the lowest rank in the UPDF earns less than 400,000 shillings. And these are the majority of them. And we expect them to watch over you and I and our nation. In police, a special police constable who is the lowest currently earns 325,000 shillings. They go, to the, they go to the same supermarkets or same markets or same, you know, shopping places like everybody else. They take their children to the same schools like everybody else. But how? How does this make sense? Right, Honorable Speaker, for police, there is even a mandatory deduction towards the Exodus Police Circle, which savings they cannot freely access. I'm sure many of them have approached you members because they cannot speak on their own. They will be taken to court martial, whatever the case might be. So even their savings, which are deducted mandatorily, they cannot access them easily. Right, Honorable Speaker, we, we need to pay attention to these men and women in uniform. They are our brothers, our sisters, our wives, our husbands, our mothers, our fathers. They are part of us. They are us. Right, Honorable Speaker, of late there has been a challenge with the roads in Kampala. Just like is the case with many other parts of the country, but there has been quite a bit of focus on Kampala capital city. This our city generates about 60% of our country's pass. About 60%. We keep milking this cow, but we don't want to feed it. I don't understand why. Of recent, a few roads were constructed, Nam roads as they called them, but the rest of the roads in Kampala are in a shambolic state. I don't know why we do not want to pay attention to these roads in Kampala, where we operate from, where all of us stay. On the weekends, yes, people go to their constituencies. But this is the heart of the country. Can we pay attention to this matter? And then demand for proper accountability from KCCA. When I was still chairperson of COSASA, I did present a report, and there were issues to do with the costings of the road, cost per kilometer. There are issues which need to be remedied. But we need to pay attention to the roads 
in Kampala. Let's not wait for people to protest. And then you hear people saying, ah, let's go and arrest them. We are going to deploy resources to arrest them and so on. Deploy those resources to fix the challenge that people are grappling with. I thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Lop, Honorable Ndezi, uh, just, uh, Honorable Ndezi, just wait a bit, wait a bit for us not to lose focus. Let Honorable Peter Gwang make the clarification you wanted to make on the issue of study. Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues. First of all, I want in a special way to welcome the leader of opposition, who is a friend. I only want to employ him and the office that the people in his office should help the institution of parliament because the office is holding is a very big office. No wonder we call him the right honorable leader of opposition. Fast forward. For the record, the NRM government under the leadership of Yoweri Kaguta Museveni is going pledged and is going to construct a stadium in Akibwa and Buhinga. That for the record. Number two, right on speaker, I am aware that there's a, a report of this committee which we are going to, which is going to be presented. Right on speaker, the Minister of Education and Sports has a plan for the infrastructure development of sports facilities across the country. Now, to come to the question of a stadium, I could call it a field built in Kenya, is a stadium. First of all, there's a difference. When I talk about Akiba Stadium and Buhinga, uh, the question uh, was. Uh, uh, let me guide. Uh, when you ask. For clarification once twice you don't insist as in you know the members heard you but has politely declined so you also politely the seat okay yeah you don't insist madam Please speaker continue. right now speaker i'm talking about akibwa and buinga stadium first of all there was a visibility study done for the construction of a stadium in buhinga which gave us a total amount of about $48 million. It's for malt sport. And when I talk about malt sport, I talk about very many disciplines of sports within that stadium. Number two, it was within that design that we have a, a hotel, a five-star hotel for purpose of promoting tourism in that part of the country. It was within the design of the construction of that stadium. So when we begin to, con to compare a field with a stadium, it really takes us to a certain area, which in my considered opinion, I don't want to dwell much on it. So that's why I'm only imploring my brother, a good friend, Lop, that my right will speak. I can even bring the entire plan and I lay it on table so that we are able to look at it in detail. So Thank that you, you don't Ivo. say, we are here to try to loot the country. No, Thank we you. have come from far. Right on the board of opposition. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Bondesi. Right on, Speaker, and all members. You may recall that we reconstituted standing committees a few days ago. This is the first report we are receiving from the reconstituted standing committee called the Budget Committee. Mr. Speaker, allow me to this opportunity to congratulate my brother, Hon. Patrick Sergi, upon reappointment to the leadership of this committee. Equally, right on Speaker, allow me to congratulate the Deputy Chairperson of the committee, my brother, Hon. Romijio Ache, upon appointment to the Deputy Leadership of this committee. Latin speaker, I read about the minority and the main report. Having read both, I also looked at the provisions of the constitution. Latin speaker and all members, it is important to note that the constitution imposes 
certain disadvantages, certain restrictions on parliament in terms of resource allocation. This is not a wish, but a matter of fact. For instance, parliament is not supposed to proceed on a motion which has the effect of imposing a charge on the consolidated fund unless the motion is moved by the president or someone acting on behalf of the president. When I was still a young MP, I wondered why this constitution puts us at a disadvantage. But somebody told me, look here, the objective of the constitution is to make sure that the ruling party in power is able to implement its manifesto. Able to implement its manifesto and also be able to be held accountable. Means, right on speaker, it is very, very hard to come around a situation whereby both the opposition and government agrees on a budget allocation on any particular year. It is a matter of compromises of give and take. But also it is important because it gives the opportunity, it gives the opposition an opportunity to the government account. Because if you decide to participate in everything through the allocation of resources, or you say you are part and pass of it. So, right on speaker, for me, having read the two reports and bearing in mind the provisions of the constitution, I think we should support the main report the main report of the budget committee. I strongly support it. But also it is important to take the notes from the opposition. Democracy is not about winners, winning everything. Therefore, themselves finance should in good faith note the concerns raised by the opposition. But in brief for me, I support the main report. Right on speaker, I have two other minor issues here to my one is the question of insurance of certificates of gender and equity. The reason we advocated for the insurance of the certificate is to make sure that resource allocation promotes harmony in our society. There is the equitable allocation of opportunities. There is equitable allocation of resources. There is fairness. Because of fairness, there is peace. People are happy with each other. There is gender violence. There is also equity. Now, right on speaker, I note from the report that certain ministries, departments, and agencies are not complying with the provisions of the certificate of gender and equity. In constitutional terms, this means that these agencies are not in line with the provisions of Article 32 of the Constitution. They are harming the provisions of Article 32, which is on affirmative action. Affirmative action is a constitutional obligation. And therefore, appeal on the Minister of Finance to ensure the sufficient resources are set aside to enable the Equal Opportunities Commission execute its constitutional mandate of ensuring that all ministries, agencies, and departments comply with the provisions regarding insurance of certificate of gender and equity. Last, right on speaker. As I have mentioned, the Constitution imposes upon us the obligation to protect certain vulnerable groups in society. Under Article 32 of the Constitution, we are required to promote older persons. We are required to promote possibilities. We are required to promote young people, promote youth. This protection extends to the budget because budgeting is self administrative force. The output from this policy will be transmitted into an appropriation bill and later an act of parliament. What on speaker, during the last budget in policy, we are very deeply disappointed. We are very deeply disappointed to know that the budget for older persons, the budget for poor disabilities, the budget for women, and the two other vulnerable groups were cut by a rate or ratio of 80%. So, what on speaker, the question I'm putting forward, or oh, the prayers I'm putting forward, I want assurances from the Minister of Finance. Assurances that the categories of new persons 
that are influenced by the constitution are properly influenced by this budget. For instance, the budget for search, I'm told, there is insufficient funding. The budget for special for national special grant for possibilities, there is a gap of three billion shillings. The budget for older persons, was there, there is a gap of some billion shillings. I beg for assurances that these vulnerable categories are properly protected. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can I have a babiku? Oh, ah, we have you. Ah, joy, Rosenia, Mumori, Dabulonji, and Songa, and Temi, Temi, Aluachi, Avana Uganda, but not business, Avaso Ziba, no. Ah, Genome Seven, Wabe, Olak and Simbi, Botagala, Basasula, Agamba Boniwa, Banyaga. Bama did Zang, give you Gaga, you want be Dwas Banker, the Beola Mnavo, Ate, the Yose, Muawe, Wurumbazung. Zaru and as Sasuli, a Kubanga Zatia, or Taz Sasula. I don't know what you, Lamo. Luachi and Gudozom Campat is Zukurwa. Luachi and Gudozom between the town of Genome Seven Tizukurwa, Mfu, Kubanga Tabamolonda, Agalokon is financial president, Chaguanim, Bubalon Dabubi, Nurture and Damokulon Dabu Mutomba Colley and Gudo. Nebula Lavinji, a Moli de Mkuru Joro Senyoni. And then song as Tema Tema Burungi, a lion song as two Caesar Blungi, and we know you will never be to Quataco. Or go over Siru Kore, Rujakun Kubevinia, now Rujaku Kubevin, you may call Mugongo, or what you are a DP, what you are FDC, a Fenach to Quataco. A Maruadino, the water did Dagala, Chituquatira Coam. A Kubanga and Daganam to Adi Dagala, never would joke again that I told you this song. Tuwari yodi yaba NRM, niti bobo ba tekira yeta kedagala liyawe. Uh, ukuba, uh, nga Uganda ya fe, jetuli mwenu, nyafe, Uganda. Uh, uh, Uliwe nguzi ususe, haba biyabo, nga bobo babu bibulishimu, fe nashi jau tuko nakuru mochi tuko wateko. Nga bobo haba katiba minister, haba kaba parliament, haba bede, a uh, government ya genome 7, bobo alu alevi wade nga kansa, bado suwa mitala wa mayanja, Songa wano, wandi wa doe duwa ide soo kujanja wa kansa le tuwe siga. Kuwe nsimbi tuzina na yetu banzibe. Uh, ukubanti, amaduwa liyo, uh, tegazi mbwa, wa tegali mudagala. Nenga atabuli mwa kensimbi nje zibi mbwa, zili mbwa abu, abalibe nguzi. Uh, nsimbi ya zojo ila gamba, tisingazi kwa atiweze zibi mbwa buli mwaka. Tuzi mba mwa amaduwa liyo, buli constituents wana njaku wa mwe duwa jeli. Omu lembe, ate nsimbi, sigalenga zichari wo. Mtuwa shi tukorecho. I don't know a tulit symbol day, be a video mena, Joel or Senor Mona Mudida, a government yacha, Gulani Jack to Yanya Genome Seven, a Guerinda, a Chija. Bagalano, Menabarico, Mabaricubaco, Maluk to Agala, Malu to Gobera, Omukamatona Sabancumide, to Jacob to the Marigambo to the Gambe, but I'm wherever.